This, in this video, I wanted to talk about uh, two different types of hub motors, uh, geared versus direct drive. And I wanted to talk about a few different uh, manufacturers of hub motors and some pros and cons I found for them. Um, so as far as hub motors, you are either direct drive, which you can see here. Direct drive motors don't have any gears. Um, it's basically a set of magnets and a set of uh, copper coils um, that um, uh, through the electromagnetic effect either propel the motor to spin or in the case of regenerative braking you can actually take uh, kinetic energy out of the bike and translate it to electric current which you could then use to charge the recharge the battery. Um, but the, the, the one big benefit of direct drive motors is they really don't have any uh, moving parts um, like gears that rub on each other and wear out. So from a maintenance perspective, that's kind of one of the big benefits. Um, the biggest drawback is uh, they need to be fairly large in size. Otherwise, you're going to have very little torque and you're not going to be able to propel the bike forward. So these direct drive motors tend to be a lot bigger, as you can see here. Um, uh, geared hub motors, which you could see here, have uh, this uh, plenary gear uh, reduction. I think um, the the Fang uses an 11 to 1 reduction. This allows the motor to spin at a fast speed, uh, but the outside of the motor will be slow. Would be will be spinning at uh, uh, 1 11 the speed of the motor. And through that, it will have a decent amount of torque. So geared hub motors have the benefit of having high torque at uh, low RPMs of the wheel. And they can also be significantly smaller. Uh, you don't need to have a large motor to achieve a minimum level of torque. Um, so from what I've seen, typically geared hub motors can be about half the weight of a uh, direct drive motor. Um, as far as pros and cons, on the direct drive hub motor side, they are uh, more simple, hence more robust. There's no gears to worry about wearing out. Uh, they are a lot quieter. They can actually be almost silent. Um, they give you the capacity to uh, brake regeneratively. Um, there are actually geared motors that have regenerative braking. Um, the one that I'm aware of is called the GMAC motor. Uh, sold by Grin Technologies that I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but the issue is, is because of this uh, gear reduction, the regenerative braking can almost be uh, overpowering. Um, so that's why most geared motors have a clutch and uh, the, the motor will just spin freely um, unless it's engaged. Um, and... Uh, Finally, direct drive motors can be more efficient because there are no gears again and there's no efficiency loss from gears rubbing on each other. Um, as far as the cons, they are usually about twice as heavy as geared hub motors and much bigger. And from what I have found, also harder to find. A lot of the kits, uh, specifically the Bethang kits on Amazon, which are, seem to be the most popular, uh, tend to be... Uh, geared hub motors, uh, which do have their benefits. Uh, they tend to be lighter and more compact. Um, so instead of weighing 10 to 18 pounds, they weigh maybe four to eight pounds. Um, they have a lot more torque at low speeds. So you're going to have more acceleration off the line. You might be able to have um, actually even higher efficiency going up um, hill, steep hills at a slow pace. And you could find some very low cost kits on Amazon, as I said. You can actually find a complete kit with hub motor, wheel, I think tire even, uh, battery, controller, display, uh, you know, pedal assist sensor or torque sensor, throttle, uh, e-brake, all of this for maybe seven, eight hundred dollars. Um, as far as the cons, uh, they the geared hub motors are less efficient at speed. So if, if let's say you're going on a long commute, I have a 20 mile commute to my work. Um, I imagine I'd be spending a significant chunk of that time at maybe 20 miles per hour. Um, the geared hub motor will be less efficient, so it'll use more battery. Um, they also tend to overheat a lot faster. So even though you might have more torque going up the hills, if you're really cranking up the throttle, 
there's a lot less thermal mass in a geared hub motor. So if you um, crank up the throttle, uh, it, it might overheat, in which case it will just completely shut down and you'll have to wait for it to cool off, which is a big bummer. And finally, it's, you know, it's less robust. It has more gears and moving parts uh, to break. And I think you might have to maintain them. Um, I don't know if you have to add more grease, um, but there, there, there is slightly more maintenance with the geared hub motor. Um, so uh, with that said, I was hoping to kind of go through some of the motors I found on uh, ebike.ca. This is the Grin Technologies website. They have a wide variety of kits, hub motors, uh, tools. I'm going to have a my next video will probably go over how to use their motor simulator, which is very useful for evaluating uh, these different hub motors. Um, and they just have a lot of very useful information. They have a lot of videos on YouTube. Um, I'd say by far the most uh, uh, informative website I have found with e-bike kits. A lot of other websites might have a uh, little bit of information about the kit, but this website has all of the details you could possibly need. Um, and they're, they're really geared towards um, DIY conversions uh, versus I think a lot of other websites want to sell you a pre, uh, prefabricated bike, a complete bike. Um, Grin Technologies really focuses on the DIY mar market. And uh, here's an example of some of their motors. Uh, I think some of them they might have already replaced with others. Um, like the Bafang G01, I'm not sure if they still sell this. Uh, they actually have this new Bafang G310 motor. Uh, I think it's the G311 on the front hub, G310 on the back. The one big benefit of this new motor is that it's actually very, very quiet. They have uh, a specially designed gear um, that uh, makes the motor very quiet, uh, which is which is a nice benefit because uh, if you listen to the Easy mo motor, which is another uh, geared hub motor, um, there's like this pretty uh, loud buzz that you constantly hear. Um, so that's one benefit of the Bafeng G310. I, I almost bought this motor, uh, but ended up not buying it specifically because of the heat dissipation. Um, I'll, I'll go over this in a separate video, but there's a motor simulator and you could specify the, the incline, the grade that you're going up, the, uh, how much human power there is and how much throttle you're going to be adding. And uh, the Bafang G310 did overheat in a lot of circumstances. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping to, to climb up some pretty big hills. So I was a little bit concerned that it's not going to be enough. Additionally, I was hoping to have regenerative braking, which is not possible in a geared motor. Uh, for that, you need to jump up to uh, the direct drive motors. And as you can see, uh, the weight goes up pretty dramatically. It, it more than doubles in the case of this TDCM, uh, internal geared hub motor. Um, this is actually a really cool motor. I was definitely considering purchasing it. It's a Taiwanese company. They seem to have high uh, quality parts. They actually do motors, not just for e-bikes, but for, I think, motorcycles and other use cases as well. Um, uh, this is an internal gear hub motor. So that means that it has uh, uh, an internal gear hub that can, I think it has a five speed hub inside. So instead of having a derailleur, and uh, you know, which is something that can break um, as it shifts from from gear to gear. Um, their internal gear hub, um, uh, I think, are tend to be a little bit more robust. And the other big benefit is you can actually shift gears without moving. So if you um, if you're stopped and you're in a hard gear, you could shift it in the TDCM internal gear hub motor and uh, go from a hard gear to an easy gear fairly easily. Um, so this was definitely one I considered. Um, this Grin through axle mo motor is is only for uh, the front of the bike, um, since uh, the 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 hand cycle I I purchased does not have disc brakes on the rear two wheels, which are more similar to the front wheel of a regular bike. Um, there was no way to mount a torque arm, uh, which is quite necessary with these powerful geared hub motors. Um, so I wasn't able to purchase this motor, but I did consider it when I was thinking of getting the Sport On XCR hand cycle, which does have two uh, disc brakes on the rear two wheels. I was actually thinking of having a dual motor setup 
which could be a bit pricey, but also would be insanely fast and have more than enough torque to take you anywhere. Um, and because it's rear wheel drive, you don't have to worry about the front wheel slipping. Um, uh, but I ended up getting a top end force three and not, uh, XCR, uh, hand cycle. So I can't get this motor. Um, uh, nine C stands for nine continent. Um, I'm not sure if they still carry these two seven XX motors. Uh, they have actually one that's called an RH212. Uh, this was one that I definitely considered getting. Uh, and one big benefit of that one is unlike the crystallite motors, which use a freewheel, um, this is, there's, there's freewheel and a cassette type for the rear cassette, the gears in the back. Um, freewheels tend to be a slightly older technology, I think a little bit less robust. Um, so that's why I was considering the RH212. Um, but I ended up getting one of these crystallite, uh, the one I got was an H3525, uh, motor. It's, it's heavier than the crystallite. So I, I gained about a kilogram or two pounds. Um, but they had a really good deal. Uh, they had them come in pre-laced wheels. And I think I saved about, uh, two, three hundred dollars on that. Um, they were discontinuing it because it uses, uh, their old connection standard. Um, so it was, it was on a uh, uh, clearance sale, and I, I got that. I think this Crystallite crown motor is one of the most powerful motors you could get. And, you know, with this one, you could build something like um, two, 3,000 watt systems. Oh, I should also mention that the Crystallite also was more efficient. So uh, it had a longer range than the RH212. And I think one big reason is it's just a bigger motor. It, it, it's, you know, because it's one kilogram bigger, it also has a bigger diameter. Um, so uh, it also has higher efficiency at low speeds, which is something else that I liked. Um, so that summarizes the different hub motors that I looked at. Um, and in the next video, I'm gonna go through how to use the motor simulator to compare uh, different motors.